Previously, we have converted the equations describing fluid motions into a rotating frame of reference and have used these to derive the geostrophic approximation. Today, we will look at the consequences of geostrophy, specifically the taylor proudwin theorem, geostrophic balance and the thermal wind equation. We begin by recalling the geostrophic approximation. In the vertical, the fluid is hydrostatic and in the horizontal, the Coriolis force is balanced by the across flow pressure gradient. Consider the flow to be rotating such that the Rosby number u on 2 omega l is small and that the fluid is of uniform density rho. Put the horizontal components of the geostrophic approximation into vector form, giving 2 omega cross u is equal to grad of pressure divided by density. Now we take the curl of this equation. The first thing to note is on the right hand side the curl of a gradient is zero and rho is uniform so we are left with the curl of omega cross u is equal to zero. This expands into four terms. Omega is uniform so the two terms with gradients of omega are zero. One term is omega times the continuity equation which for our assumptions is zero leaving omega dot grad u is equal to zero. Let's choose our coordinates such that omega is in the z direction, meaning the dot grad operator becomes the vertical gradient of u. This expands to du dz equals dv dz equals dw dz equals zero. Now, if there is anywhere in the domain that you know w equals zero, like a boundary, then because dw dz equals zero, W is zero everywhere, and you are left with du dz equals dv dz equals zero. This is the Taylor Proudman theorem. Physically, it says that horizontal velocities are constant with depth, and that the fluid moves as infinitely skinny columns called Taylor columns. These columns align themselves with the axis of rotation. Note at this point that the density stratification removes this property of the fluid, as the curl of grad pressure on rho is no longer zero. We will come back to this. The next concept to introduce is the geostrophic balance. Consider one horizontal component of the geostrophic equation. Picture an ocean in x, y, z coordinates with depth h naught and surface pressure p naught. The rotation is anticlockwise, so we are in the northern hemisphere. Now imagine that h, the ocean depth, is a function of y. So the free surface here slopes down to the right. The hydrostatic pressure in the domain is a function of the water depth h and the atmospheric pressure p naught. We can differentiate the hydrostatic pressure equation in y to get an expression for the change in pressure in the y direction. On the right hand side, the only term that has a y dependence is h, giving dp dy equals rho g dh dy. This term is one that we have seen before in the geostrophic equation. It is substituted in, cancelling for density and rearranging for u, giving us u as a function of the across stream free surface slope. This, the geostrophic balance, is a very useful relationship. Free surface slopes are something that we can readily measure, particularly with satellite observations, and this relation gives us some meaningful information about the velocity field from a measurable quantity. Now, the geostrophic approximation relates flow to the horizontal pressure gradient, and what we have done with the geostrophic balance is to get a horizontal pressure gradient from the free surface variations. Of course, free surface variations aren't the only way to generate horizontal pressure gradients. Another way is to allow the density to be a function of y and z. Let's start by differentiating the hydrostatic equation in y, giving the horizontal change in the vertical pressure gradient as equal to the horizontal change in density times gravity. Next, we take the vertical derivative of the geostrophic equation. This gives us the vertical change in u times the Coriolis parameter as equal 
to the vertical change of 1 on density times the horizontal pressure gradient. If we consider the density to be the uniform reference density plus some relatively small change from this, rho prime, the vertical gradient of the density is small enough to be ignored, giving the right hand side as the inverse of the reference density times the horizontal and vertical gradients of pressure. So what we have done is differentiate the hydrostatic equation in Y and the geostrophic equation in Z, giving two equations with a common term of pressure. We use this to combine the two equations, returning the vertical gradient of velocity as equal to the horizontal gradient of density. This is what we call the thermal wind equation. This is useful because we can measure the horizontal gradients of density with moorings or depth profiles throughout the ocean and thus estimate the flow between them. The taylor proudman theorem states that flow moves as columns with no vertical gradients of horizontal velocities, which is in direct contrast to the thermal wind equation. Recall the taylor proudman equation comes about by taking the curl of the geostrophic equation through which the right hand side vanishes because we have assumed that density is uniform. In the thermal wind equation we allow the density field to vary meaning the right hand side is no longer zero. It becomes grad p cross grad 1 on rho this term is called the baroclinic term and it reconciles the two concepts we have just derived. The sea surface drops about one meter across the Drake Passage, which is around 500 kilometers. Estimate the transport of the Antarctic circumpolar current through the Drake Passage that results from this change in sea surface height.